Welcome. Today, I am sharing how I start my daily practice with you. The purpose of my routine is to find a sustainable balance, both in my posture and hands at the keyboard. The balance will help you play as well as possible, as easily as possible. Also, the bigger the muscle you use in every motion, more efficient and effective it becomes physically and musically. When I sit at the keyboard, I take the time to settle into a comfortable position. The weight of my upper body rests comfortably on the bench. Each vertebra of my spine goes straight on top of the other. The weight of my head gets balanced on top of my spine. Then I lean forward a bit to feel the weight of my arms. I support the shifting of the weight with my core and the heels of my feet. Then I rest my fists on the three black keys, four octaves apart. As I sit with my eyes closed, I am doing several things. First, I'm finding a position at the piano where I can stay for hours without being tired anywhere in my body. I let go of my arm weight, resting it on the keys. I let go of my body, supporting it with my core and my heels. Second, as I listen to the sound of the chord decaying, I am slowly breathing out, feeling my eyeballs slowly descending behind my closed eyelids. I'm sort of hypnotizing myself to get my body and psyche into the piano zone. This also warms up my sense of hearing. I get more attuned to the sound of the piano. Next, I play the same chord with my three inner fingers in each hand, two, three, and four. I now have more length in my lower arms, so I have to shift my upper body weight slightly backward to be more comfortable. Then I add my outer fingers, the thumb and the pinky, finger number one and five on the white keys outside of the black keys. Now I have my arm weight resting with my five fingers on E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, C. Again, I listen to the chord all the way to complete decay as I adjust my weight and breathe out slowly, going deeper into my piano zone. Now, the fingers. First, small motions with your fingers never leaving the key surfaces. Slowly move each finger in both hands from one to five while the rest of the fingers are still resting on the cord. Focus on how each joint in your finger relates to your wrists, arms, back muscles, and your core as they move. I am feeling the resistance of the keys against the movements of my fingers as I do this. Each finger is different in its length, strength, etc. I adjust to those differences to have them produce the same attack with the same volume. I make my motions bigger and bigger as I progress. I raise my fingers, now away from the keys with curved fingers. Finally, I stretch my fingers and use the speed of my fingers curling in as they approach the keys. For the next two exercises, I take advantage of the symmetry on the keyboard to equalize my left and right fingers. The keyboard is symmetrical around the middle D, 
So going in the opposite direction, centering around the note D, we can have a mirror image between our right and left hand. I'm right-handed, so that is the hand that tends to be more intuitive and mobile. I compare my left hand to the right hand often to try to match my left to the right. First, expanding interval exercise. Two goals we are looking to accomplish here. One is to accommodate the maximum optimal stretches between two fingers by adjusting our wrists, arms, and posture. The other is to achieve a hand balance on each finger in playing different intervals. It can only be optimal with the adjustment of your positions in your hands as well as your posture. Second, outward chromatic scales with different fingerings. First, three, four, and five. Four and five tend to be less versatile and weaker in terms of sound volume and speed. This chromatic scale is great for these fingers. Then, three, two, and one. This is pretty much a straight chromatic scale. I do it just to balance my three, four, five chromatic scale. Then finally, two and one, with the two sliding off from the black to the white key for every white-white key combination. So, from the right hand on D sharp and the left hand on D flat, we go in both hands 2 2 1, 2 1 2 1, 2 2 1, 2 1 2 1, and so on. Straight chromatic scale with both hands going in the same direction. I do it in major second because it's harder when the two hands are closer together. Try it! Then, extended finger exercise. I first play a B major scale. Chopin started his beginner students not with C major, but with B major scale. Chopin considered B major to be more natural to human hands because it has your long fingers, two, three, and four, on black keys, and shorter fingers, one and two, on white keys. He believed in playing with the fleshy part of your fingers and not the tips because he believed that the more skin in contact with the keys, the more closely you felt the music. Now, B major arpeggio, and then moving on to different seventh chord arpeggios that starts with the note B. G7 first inversion, B diminished seventh, B half diminished seventh, etc. Again, going from the lowest to the highest register and vice versa, requires shifting of the center of gravity, which needs to be supported by your core and the heels. To finish, I practice octaves or rather, practice balancing my hands on wide intervals. I do this by going back and forth on B flat major scale because the thumbs on black keys makes balancing my hands more challenging. <laughs> 